many have fit dinosaurs into the Bible story? There are no dinosaurs in the Bible. You've got crocodiles and the Nautilus and horseshoe crab and so on. You, you've got these creatures that, according to evolutionists, lived before dinosaurs and they're still living with us today. So the point is, these creatures are living with us today. Why is it so stupid to think that dinosaurs couldn't live with people? It is stupid because we know for a fact that the dinosaurs died out 65 million years ago. The other creatures evolved. Google horseshoe crab evolution to see how. Now most people have the wrong idea about dinosaurs. What, what? They think they're all great big monsters. Uh -huh. The average size of a dinosaur is only the size of a sheep. This is irrelevant. If you want to keep a blue whale in your aquarium, you don't build an aquarium the size of an average aquatic mammal. People think that there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different types of dinosaurs. Actually, there's only about 50 families of dinosaurs, which means about 50 kinds. You don't get to define what a kind is, Ken. The Old Testament, the Bible, Leviticus, defines kinds. Try reading your Bible. We would say in most instances, most instances, not all, but most instances, that the kind would be more at the family level of classification. Which is contrary to what your holy book explicitly states in Leviticus. And we've actually had, for instance, uh, some scientists working on how many kinds of land animals are there on the earth. Uh, not species, mm -hmm. but how many kinds, actual kinds. Because, you know, deer and moose are the same kind. You know, alpacas, llamas, one hump camels, two hump camels are all the same kind. So you say that these are the same kind, Ken. Yet Leviticus states that these three vultures are different kinds. Why would we believe you, Ken? In fact, I do believe there is a dinosaur described in detail in the Bible more than most other animals. In the book of Job, Job chapter 40, verse 15, it says, Behold, behemoth, uh, everything about him is big and strong, his bones are strong, has a tail like a cedar tree. Mm -hmm. Here's Ken lying for Jesus again. It doesn't say he has a tail like a cedar tree. It says he moveth his tail like a cedar. And if you look in Strong's and look under the Hebrew, you'll understand that it's all to do with the flapping and the swishing of the tail. You know, and some of the Bible notes, I noticed in some of the Bibles say it was an elephant or hippopotamus. Well, if you see a hippo tail, you know, it's like a flap of skin. Mm -hmm. You know, a cedar tree? No, I don't think so. It's more, we believe, the description of something like a sauropod dinosaur. See, people say, well, what happened to the dinosaurs? Well, why aren't you interested in the dodo bird? What happened to the dodo bird? Yeah. We know very well what happened to the dodo. Dutch sailors recorded it on Mauritius in 1598 and had eaten all that they could lay their hands on by 1662. Live birds were captured and shipped abroad, and there is specific mention of a live dodo in London in 1638, whereas no human has ever seen a live dinosaur. So, time to wrap up. Ken wants us to believe that these are the same kind of animal, whilst these are not related at all. He then wants us to believe that the wide variety of species we now know somehow evolved, without evolving, from his kinds on the ark in just a few hundred years. And that somehow 50 kinds of dinosaur, which Noah carefully saved at God's command, evolved, without evolving, into over 1,000 recorded species, and then all died out, all within a couple of hundred years of the flood. And all of this is based on Ken's rewriting the Bible texts to suit his agenda. Those texts he so insistently claims must be taken literally. Did you enjoy that, kids? 